Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. My name is Darren Little from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And guys, have we got a special treat for you today. You know, life has a way of throwing us curveballs. Some interesting twists and turns can happen along a life journey. And you probably have had something happen to you along your journey. So you probably know what I'm talking about. Now, the story that you're about to hear today, guys, I mean, this is completely transformational. Imagine being in a situation where you work your way all the way up to the very top. You're highly successful. You have all the things that people typically dream about, you know, the, the mansion and the cars and the lifestyle. And you're married, you're happy, you've got a family. And all of a sudden, everything comes crashing down when you find that your spouse cheated on you. And this is what happened for the gentleman that you're about to meet. His entire world came crumbling down and he moved into depression, guys. And if you've ever dealt with depression, it can be very debilitating and it can actually kill you. And that's where he was. He was literally on the verge of suicide. And his friends actually moved into his house to try to prevent him from committing suicide. And he, he couldn't work. He couldn't work. He was so wrapped up in the whole thing. His whole life was falling apart and he completely lost everything. The cars, the house, the money, it all came tumbling down, guys. And he took his last little bit of money and he booked a one-way ticket to Manila with a goal to take his own life. Now, from there, he completely turned his life around. He met the woman of his dreams. They now have a beautiful family in Manila. He's got a penthouse suite there. And he moved on to become the crypto king an eight-figure income earner. And he's going to be sharing a little bit about his story today and something that he's just recently come across that could put you and your family into financial freedom. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my business partner, Mr. Ari Maccabee. Hey, Darren, I appreciate you coming out and telling everybody my story. Guys, you know what? Uh, it's kind of funny, you know, actually, every time Darren says that, I still get choked up. Like, it, it still affects me so much in so many different ways. And, um, you know, I, I'm really excited to be here, guys. And I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I'm going to talk a lot about some things that I found out in my own due diligence. Tonight, you're actually going to get to see some of my due diligence live. So we can actually talk about what this is. So I want to welcome you tonight to the Crypto Wealth Club presentation for Mining City. But before we get into that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Now I'm actually going to open up this presentation to you. So you guys can actually see, let's just go ahead and do this. You can actually see a little bit about what I want to talk about. So obviously my name is Ari Maccabee, okay? And uh, this is what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about who I am, how I got involved, what I found out when I was doing my research. We're going to talk about IL Avramovich, who he is and why it actually matters. We're going to talk about Mine Best and Mining City, how it started and came to be and why, and how you can earn a full-time income from home, from online or anywhere in the world with a laptop and Wi-Fi, which is exactly what I do. So let's talk about me for a second. So I got network marketing, so you guys know, when I was 19, while well, I was enlisted in the Army. I was invited one day to go see an A.O. Williams presentation, and that night, changed my life forever. I went on to become one of top, the top A.L. Williams representatives in Southern California in less than one year. I was a top earner in Equinox, and I was the number two money earner in ACI all before the age of 24. Now, it seems rough, you know, obviously I'm doing great, but I got out of the military to pursue that industry. And unfortunately, when I was at ACI, we had four owners. We had two Hispanic owners, and we had two owners from Columbia. 
And the two guys that were from Mexico, great people. I'm still friends with one of them today. My buddy, Rafael, if you're out there watching this, I want to give you a shout out because I still love you. But the other two owners that were Colombian embezzled the money and fled back to Colombia. And uh, obviously, I had this big office where we were doing presentations. I got stuck with lease. I got stuck with all this stuff. And it just frustrated me so much that I walked away from the industry. And I actually got in the car business for a long time in Southern California. And um, as I, I was 11 years basically in the car business, so you guys know, and I uh, went through a really bad time with my boy's mom. She had unfortunately had got addicted to drugs. Uh, my life, that was the first time my life blew up because I became a single father to two young boys at age three and age seven months. And I needed a way to earn from home. So I started a mortgage company in my house. That company grew into 41 states. I sold it in 2006. But while I was doing mortgages, I started generating leads for my mortgage company through CPA as an advertiser. Now, if you don't know what CPA is, it's like cost per lead, cost per view, cost per click, cost per sale. That's how I got exposed to the online arena was because I needed to do it so my mortgage branches could all grow. And eventually, you know, I went through a downfall as Darren talked about. You know, I was living in a beautiful home. I had a great life. And uh, unfortunately, my wife cheated on me and it drove me into a really dark place in my life where I actually tried to kill myself. I get a little choked up talking about this. So I tried to kill myself three times. And, uh, you know, I took a trip, you know, to the Philippines. I told my dad, I said, you know, I got to give this life, you know, one more chance. And so I hopped on a plane. I booked a one way ticket. And I'll never forget because I left Phoenix. I got to uh, San Francisco to take my connecting flight to come over to the Philippines. And the lady at the uh, ticket gate said, where's your exit ticket? And unfortunately, I had canceled all my credit cards. I didn't have an exit ticket. So I actually had to call my dad and have my dad pay for a ticket for me, a one way ticket to Macau, China from out of the Philippines. So I had an exit ticket and I told him I'm going to book it so it's cancelable. So you can actually get a refund on it. So that's what I did. I arrived here, rented a condo. I had $1,780 to my name after renting the condo. I was pretty much devastated, guys. But the thing is, I had these crazy skills and how to generate leads. And, uh, you know, for the first three or four months, to be honest with you, I was just living off like 50 bucks a week, man. I mean, I was eating so poor and so broke. And, uh, one of my buddies that I did CPA with reached out to me and said, all right, I know what's going on in your life. You disappeared for a year and a half and you're a great guy. You need to get your head out of your butt. You need to get back to work. And that's really all it took for me it was somebody that really knew me to get me to pull my head out. Now, meanwhile, keep in mind, I'm walking around the Philippines and I got to tell you, if you don't know Filipinos, they're some of the nicest people in the world. Like, so when I would walk outside, people were so warm and so nice to me and they kind of brought me back out of my shell. And they gave me that will to get back to work. And uh, so I started to work. You know, my first year, I made very big money, like mid six figures, you know, right out of the gate. And uh, unfortunately, though, what happened in the business is in 2017, I had promoted this company, made like $700,000. And the company overnight disappeared with everybody's money, including $230,000 of commissions that I was owed. And I was so mad. I was so frustrated that I basically put out a video and told everybody I was done. I was quitting. I was walking away. And I really intended to. I quit. I intended to quit. Darren in my ear all the time saying, man, you need to come back. You need to do this. You know, let's just focus on this, you know. And, and you know, we have a company called Black Ops Live Underground Marketing where we teach marketing. So I thought if I'm going to do anything, that's all I'm going to do. And, you know, one of the things that I'll tell you that I did at that point in time is I literally stopped taking anyone's word for anything. I started doing my own due diligence. I did in-depth research on each and every company prior to joining. Still got fooled a couple times because owners sometimes lie. And then I turned around about a year later and we started the Is It, Is it a Scam group on Facebook. And I started calling out the scams and showing people the results on my due diligence and starting teaching people how to identify scams. I was a pain in a lot of people's butt. I'm going to tell you that now. And I realized that. But my intentions were never to piss off the people that I loved. It was to protect the people that I loved from being scammed and losing their money. And uh, what happened was one of my members in that group messaged me and they showed me two websites side by side that use CGI images as a header, one labeled Mind Best 
and the other one called Mining City. Now, it's funny to say that when I first saw this, I called it a scam. And based on the fact that we had numerous scams, including several mining scams like AWS and all these others, Mining Max, you know, I wanted people in my group to understand I didn't want them to get involved in a new scam because I didn't want them to lose mess, uh, any money. But then something kind of unique happened. I got a message from Ayal Abramovich. He reached out to me on LinkedIn. He started a very nice conversation with me. Unlike most of the time when you call something a scam, the guy behind it, they'll argue with you. You know, they'll threaten you. They'll do all these things, but not Ayal. He was very nice. He sent me a bunch of information. And that information led to my due diligence. So I want to talk a little bit about him so you guys know who he is, because without him, without a doubt, I wouldn't be here. OK, so this is what I'm going to tell you up front based on my research. And then I'm going to prove it to you. Number one, Aya Avramovich is an inventor. He was an inventor for the Israeli military before he went to the private sector. He made high technology products for the military and the public. He's been a cryptocurrency miner. He started MineBest in 2017 with $1.5 million of his and his family's money. MineBest has been awarded as one of the top 10 mining pools in the world. And I'm going to show you all of this, guys, so you know. But here's the cool part. He, you know, as an inventor, he gets this thing in his head sometimes where he's getting into something. And, you know, he started in cryptocurrency in 2016, started his own mine in 2017. But in 2018, he wasn't done. He saw a project called Bitcoin Royale. They couldn't make it actually work. So he decided he wanted to take that open source project and he wanted to turn it into something that would actually work. And that resulted in Bitcoin Vault, which is the number one and only coin in the industry that's theft proof. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But here's some of my actual due diligence. The first thing that I did, because if the guy's an inventor, you have patents. So I looked up his name with the word patents beside it, and I had all these th screens pop up, several of them. The guy has a lot of patents. I mean, he really is that guy. So as I found the patents and the companies they were attached to, I started to look at the companies. So this is one of the companies. The company is called Thinium, and you can actually go to the website. It's thinium.com, and you can see this little red box over to the right right here. This is what it said on, this, on the website. Chief Technologist Ayal Avramovich has extensive experience in military and advanced commercial technology, developing the most innovative and revolutionary products and portable technology today. Here's the next one. Now, this is a big company, guys. If you don't know who Gigalinks is, they've been around for a long time. It's also an Israeli company. And uh, unbeknownst to me, he made this product called the Gigalinks Converter, which actually was sold to Sony. Obviously, a big project, made millions of dollars. But here's another thing that sh shows you right on the website. He was actually the CEO of the company, okay? And again, here's some of the products. The products on the left are actually part of the Thinium line that he made, the Gigalinks converter. And here's another product on the bottom that's called the WeMe Massage Robot. Now, this product is actually kind of unique because I've actually seen this product on a home shopping network or some type of shopping network. I also showed me it. Showed me how much he made off of it. A single sale in a day, almost $400,000 in a day. Okay. These are just some of the things I found out. But here's where it gets interesting. You have a guy that gets into mining space in 2017. He's not just in the mining space. This guy is a featured speaker at mining events all over the world. In the top left, you actually have the uh, Team Blockchain Summit. In the bottom one, I can't tell you exactly where this is at, but this is another summit. And then in the top right, you have another one, actually, where he's here talking at the uh, Miner Summit in China. And then in the bottom one, this is the Global Mining Leader Summit in 2018. And if you notice all the way to right, right here, you'll actually see his photo, and that's him set in a chair. There's also videos, guys, on YouTube, on the MindBest channel. There's videos, for, if you look up the summits themselves, you'll see videos of him on their channels where he's speaking live. I've seen it all, okay? This right here really got my attention because for the first time we had a company that existed for two years prior to they launch, launching anything else. You had a guy that had climbed the ranks in the industry who had actually become an accomplished person so much so that he was chosen to speak all over the world. Okay. Now I had my full attention with this guy. I was plugged in. I was like, I was realizing that this company that I had called a scam was probably not a scam. That's where I was at about this stage. 
And then I heard a story. And the story is kind of a unique one where Ial and Greg were actually, because you have to understand the relationship. You know, obviously, Ial was the CEO of MindBest, and Greg was the MindBest vice president of marketing. And one day they were speaking at a convention in South Korea. And while they were there, one of the guys in the audience, his name was Hanil Park. He's the head of Item Group. If you don't know what that is, it stands for International, or International Digital, Digital Asset Management Group. And I actually knew who this guy was because I had been in a different company with him before. So when I heard that, I was like, whoa, hold up a second. I heard this guy's name. And then so I started to research. I found out how I heard it because we had worked together before. And so uh, what I'll tell you about Mr. Park is this. He, he is, uh, without a doubt, a go-getter, one of the best of the best. And he's also very smart. So he was noticing with his other company that some things weren't adding up financially. So immediately when he heard these guys speak, they made sense. So he asked them, please, let's have a chat. And so they ended up going out, sitting down, having a chat. And this is where the beginning of Mining City began, where they started to formulate a process. Now, IL has a relationship, obviously, with the government of Kazakhstan for uh, MindBest. So Greg actually left MindBest and became the CEO of Mining City while Hanil Park became the master distributor and the number one earner in the company, guys. So let's talk a little bit about what you came to hear about. And that, folks, is Mining City. Okay, now let me take a deep breath and a quick drink real quick because I'm getting a little winded. But I want you guys to hear all about this company because I'm really, really ex excited about it. Uh, obviously, a little bit, if you guys don't know, you're brand new. You don't know what cryptocurrency is. Let's talk about it for a second because... You know, digital currency is, you know, is cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is a digital currency. It is a cryptocurrency. OK, it's used to complete financial tracks transactions using blockchain technology versus like debit cards and credit cards. The nice uh, fact about it is it provides high security and it can't be counterfeited. It's also a mean of storing value digitally, which means it's highly portable and it doesn't require a central authority, which is kind of unique because it's the first currency in the world that was actually made for the people by the people. OK, the first cryptocurrency itself, guys, was Bitcoin. We all know that story. If you don't, I'm going to talk a little about it. Uh, but it's essential to understand the technology when participating in anything to do with cryptocurrency. So let's just cover this really quick. So you have this thing called blockchain. People always say to me, Ari, what is that? Well, blockchain is basically a decentralized ledger like the banks have their own ledgers but you can't see them but with cryptocurrency the ledger is decentralized and it's public and it's open to anybody so it's a chain of blocks that are linked together each block contains information of transactions detailing who is participating in the transaction the time the date the amount transferred and each block stores a unique code which we call hash to distinguish them from other blocks so this is how blocks are basically added to the to the blockchain. So let's say that person A sends money to B. So let's say that I am person A and I'm sending Darren money. So I'll send it over to Darren. The nodes, which are the miners, the network, they'll confirm the transaction. And then the block is given a hash and added to the blockchain, which is that little link, that hash or TX hash. That's that little link you can click on in your wallet to open up a web page. So the two people involved can look at the transaction, know exactly what it is. So let's talk about how you can get cryptocurrency itself. Now, first of all, there's really only two ways to get cryptocurrency. You can buy it or you can mine it. OK, you can go to an exchange and you can purchase Bitcoin, Bitcoin vault or any number of twenty four hundred different cryptocurrencies from an exchange. You can also uh, use one of the many crypto exchanges operating around the world to, to purchase about any one of them that you want. You can create a digital account after choosing a market. You do deposit funds and then purchase the actual type of currency or cryptocurrency that you want. So here's the nice thing. Like the other side is you can purchase in the mining process, which we were talking about. So this is actually the best way. This is the way that I got started. I started mining in May of 2011. And I'll tell you up front, when I started mining, I had no idea what I was doing. I just had a neighbor that had said to me, Ari, you need to start mining Bitcoin. And because I had all this money, you know, I was like, what's it going to cost me? Twenty five hundred bucks, three grand. And, you know, he was like, yeah, it's going to be close to three thousand bucks. We'll put together this little black box. 
We'll set it up in your house and you'll start mining. Now, back in 2011, guys, there wasn't a lot of people mining. So it was easy to mine out of your house. Today, you can't be competitive in your house. The machines are too quick. It eats up more electricity. It gets hot. You just can't do that. So here's what I like about this whole process is you're competing in the uh, or participating in the mining process as a node or a miner, you get a reward when you add the block to the blockchain. Okay. So this is kind of a unique deal. So mining in itself, what is it? How's it work? Uh, the miners basically process the approval of transactions that connect the block to the blockchain. Once it's approved, it's added to the blockchain. A block is approved and added to the blockchain when miners confirm the transaction and solve the complex mathematical problem. The first miner to solve and add the block to the chain is given a reward in Bitcoin or Bitcoin Vault or whatever it's mining, depending on the blockchain transactions that are being approved. Now, currently, when a block is awarded right now with Bitcoin, it's only 6.25 Bitcoin. So it's went down from what it used to be. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But when one block is connected to the blockchain, it is stored on the distributed ledger and the miners begin to process to the transactions of the next block to obtain the block reward. So here's the key factors of mining. First of all, there's four things you got to be aware of. OK, you got difficulty. So as more nodes participate in the mining, the mining or the difficulty to solve the block to obtain the reward is adjusted. And they try to keep it at a 10 minute average for both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Vault. And I believe the same applies to Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Cash. But the mining pool, this is actually where it gets kind of unique. This is what I was saying earlier. When you, you can't really compete at home with one or two machines. It just doesn't work. So you basically join a pool, okay? And that pool allows you guys to put all your resources together. And then you compete more effectively, increasing their chance to receive the block reward, okay? A hash, again, is the mathematical problem the nodes need to solve, okay? And hash rate is the number of guesses your miner can make per second. So the block reward, again, with uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Vault is generated when a miner finds a solution. Now, Bitcoin is halved every 210,000 blocks, which is currently a 6.25 BTC every 10 minutes. And the next halving is expected in 2024. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Bitcoin Vault and a little bit and how it halves to help you guys understand that. So bear with me on that. But the other factor you guys have is you got the miner's power consumption. So the higher the power consumption of the miner, the more that is required to be paid in electricity costs, which means you're losing profit. Pool fees, the uh, percentage of earnings taken for the service of uni using a mining pool. OK, so one of the things that. Uh, Mining City said is, I'm part of the BTC.com mining pool. And that's one of the things I verified. And it was very easy to verify because literally anybody can join that pool. If you buy a bunch of machines and you have a setup, you know, securely and so on and so forth, you can actually download their software and you can put load that on your machine. You can mine as part of the pool and you'll get your share of the profits through the pool, but you'll pay a 2% uh, pool fee. That's what the pool uh, fee is right there. So you guys know. And then you have Bitcoin price. The mine Bitcoin is converted to any other currencies will show profitability because that's newly minted money. It's like you have a free license to print money for the very first time. And obviously when it's generated, you should always be in profit. But like now with Bitcoin itself, because we just have the block reward just cut down, the price went up to increase it. Well, Bitcoin's price or value hasn't caught up yet. So it's not quite that profitable right now. But Bitcoin vault itself is highly profitable. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the TXID or the un uh, unique transaction ID, which is generated to view completed transactions. A lot of us will call that the TX hash. That's again, that little link in the wallet. You can click on it and you can see all the details of the transaction, what it was worth when you sent it and what it's worth right now. You can see uh, what wallet it went from and to, you can even track back where that, that Bitcoin came from, from the previous wallets that sent to the one that sent to you. So it's actually a really unique little ledger and it really keeps everything out there publicly and it's impossible to fool. That's what I love about it. Now, let's talk about uh, reasons for increasing or decreasing mining difficulty. If more miners participate in the mining, it's more likely to create a block faster. Therefore, to maintain the average of 10 minutes per block, the difficulty to solve the mathematical problem is increased or decreased depending on the total number of miners participating in the network. 
here's the other thing I want you guys to cover. So we, cause somebody asked me this question today, they say, okay, so I'm looking at my Bitcoin vault, uh, you know, how much I'm being paid and I see some of it's decreasing. Of course it is, because here's the thing. It's like a big piece of a pizza pie. So I want you to look at the pizza pie as a, you get a slice of it if you're part of a pool. But the more people that become part of the pool, the smaller your slice will be. It doesn't mean that you're making less profit, just less cryptocurrency. So it's a little different process to help you guys understand. So let's talk about more about Bitcoin. Obviously, uh, Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency. It was created by an anonymous programmer called Satoshi Nokomoto on the 1st of November 2008 using blockchain technology. Let's talk about the differences between fiat or paper money and Bitcoin. So with uh, fiat, when it comes to the creation process, it's issued by certain institutions like banks. But with Bitcoin, anybody can participate in the process of miner. Anybody can be a creator of Bitcoin, but not everyone can be a creator of fiat currency. Transaction ledger. The information on the ledger is not transparent. It's operated by institutions when it comes to free out currency. You can't see. But with Bitcoin, it's a distributed ledger. Transaction her uh, currency or transaction history and balances can be viewed by anyone on the network. Then you have transaction fees. For fiat, if you want to send something overseas, it's quite expensive. I know because I've done it. I mean, sometimes it could be as much as five or six percent of what you're sending. And with Bitcoin, it could be a whole lot less. Like I have a transaction we sent out of my wife's wallet. It was like 144,000 bucks. And that little transaction, I think, cost us like $100. I mean, it was like dirt cheap. I have to look it up and I'll post it one day in the group so you guys can actually see it because it was so cheap. And then you have uh, transaction times. So let's say I send money from the United States to the Philippines or the Philippines to the U.S. Typically, it's going to take three and maybe even four days. And those are working days, meaning banking days, open days. But with Bitcoin, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. It's usually about 10 minutes. Doesn't matter if it's Sunday. Doesn't matter if it's Saturday. It's 10 minutes. Then you have the potential of Bitcoin. This is one of the biggest reasons that really got my eyes to open. Now, again, I told you guys I started mining in May of 2011. But here's the truth of the story. Around the end of 2011, I basically stopped because Bitcoin tumbled. It went back down in value. 2012 was kind of a horrible year. Had I known what was going to happen in 2013, I would have never stopped. It was my biggest mistake that I will ever say to anybody. That was the biggest thing I did was stop. 2012 was a nightmare for me. But here's what happened in 2013. Bitcoin spiked again. So my buddy that got me involved in the first time reached out to me and said, hey, man, you see what's happened to Bitcoin? You need to start doing it again. And here's why it made sense, because of the scarcity of the coin. There's only 21 million Bitcoins in total. The last coin is expected to be mined in 2140. Now, currently, we have about 18 million, a little over 18 million, I think it's like 18 million, 300 and some thousand coins that have actually been mined. So with that set total of, of coins that's going to be mined, that's all there's ever going to be. That's going to force the value to go up. That's the thing I like about Bitcoin. It's what really attracted me to it. And then you have this thing called decentralization. And this is really the beauty of it. So unlike, say, a bank where you take your money in, you put it in the bank, the bank controls it. They tell you how much you can take out, when you can take it out. If you want to take out a big amount, guess what? You got to put in a request a few days prior. It's like a pain in the butt. But with Bitcoin, because it's decentralized, it's held in your own wallet. You can spend what you want to spend, whatever you want to spend it. Nobody's going to approve your transaction. Nobody's going to tell you you can't make a transaction. It's completely controlled by you, whereas with the bank, it's controlled by the institution. Then you have the value increase as the block reward is halved. So this is what is kind of a cool thing. Bitcoin just halved. And typically, somewhere around 90 to 120 days after the halving, we'll start to see an increase because that's what's happened every single time it's halved before. And we've already seen this with Bitcoin Vault. Every time it has, which is twice, it's went up in value. So here's the cool part again. You know, when having happens, uh, you know, you got 210,000 blocks every four years is approximately. That's when it has. So 18 million coins I already told you have been mined. Currently, 6.25 Bitcoins are mined every 10 minutes. The next have period is around 2024. Past having as history, we see an increase after uh, value actually increase after the block reward decreases. So it's kind of like an inflation proof currency, whereas 
let's say that, you know, they flood the market with a bunch more dollars. What happens to the, the dollar? The value goes way down. Well, as we start to get more scarce and there's less Bitcoins going around, it goes up. And so it's beautiful. So let's talk about Bitcoin Vault. I mean, this is the one that you guys should be really ready to pay attention to because this is a phenomenal coin. OK, what I like about this coin is not owned by a network marketing company. It's not an MLM coin or a shit coin. It was actually created by IAL outside of the company. And it was something that he started on, you know, before he actually money said he took off. And this is what's really unique about it. This coin is, uh, they've already, they've already, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, this is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, obviously, we'll see if I, okay, so here we are. So here's Bitcoin Vault. Bitcoin, unlike, uh, you know, Bitcoin Vault has one key, okay? Well, Bitcoin Vault has three keys. Bitcoin has a private key. Bitcoin Vault has a private key. But it also has a transaction cancellation key, which is theft protection. And then it has a third key, which is a 10-minute transaction key. So let's talk about how that works. Let's say that I'm sending Darren some money and it's going to be Bitcoin Vault. So I send it to him on my phone. I can go right over to my wallet on my computer and I can send him the third key and do a fast transaction confirmation because I know him. But now let's say somebody accidentally hacks my network, gets into my computer and they send Bitcoin Vault from my wallet on my computer to themselves. And in the morning I wake up and I realize, oh, my God, I've been hacked. Well, I can go over and use the second key to retrieve all of those stolen coins back into my wallet. That is the beauty of this coin. It is the ultimate store of value. Unlike Bitcoin SV or Bitcoin Cash, it's not a hard fork of Bitcoin. It is the Genesis coin. OK, they, what they've done is they took Bitcoin Core. They created a, a brand new coin by adding some additional code to it for the theft protection. And then they mined the Genesis coin. So it started from ground zero. OK, and this is what's really cool. It's just like Bitcoin. It's only going to have 21 million Bitcoin vaults in circulation. OK, and, uh, you know, you can actually see on this next page. This is what's cool about it is you actually have it's mined with the same machines as Bitcoin is same ASIC chip, same algorithm, SHA-256. And the potential for this is very unique because this is a proof of work coin. It's not a, a token like, say, BitConnect that was uh, proof of stake or Clubcoin that was proof of stake. This is a real coin. It's got a real ecosystem. It's got real mining. It's got a lot of things going on it in its infrastructure, you know, that's very unique. But the coolest thing of all to me is the fact I feel like I'm mining Bitcoin back in 2013. And here's why. This coin is having every six months. So if you notice, we actually right now, this is the, was the block reward was 175, just went to 150 because it halved in May 2020. The next halving is going to be in November 2020, it's going to have to 125. Every time this happens, more coins will be in circulation and you'll actually see value increases because that's what halving does. It pushes up the price. This is why I like this coin, this and the security. Uh, fair distribution. This is the other thing I really like about it. So when, as I said earlier, when I started mining back in May of 2011, there wasn't a whole lot of people mining, but the people that were mining, they mined a lot of Bitcoins. So guess what happened? A lot of people had 10 or 15 or 20,000 Bitcoins before anybody else even knew about Bitcoin. And unfortunately, that led to unfair distribution, meaning that you had a lot of whales that are holding a lot of, a lot of coins but really, in reality, there's very few people across the globe that actually hold Bitcoin in a wallet. In fact, there's less than 2% of the world. That's the crazy part. Less than 2%. In fact, it's more like 1.25 or 1.3, something like that. And uh, because the block rewards from the first block uh, of Bitcoin vault was actually mined as a Genesis coin, it, this is a really fair distribution across, across many wallets. So it's unlike Bitcoin, you're not going to have a ton of people that are just whales holding all of the coins, holding all of the value when it starts trading and so on and so forth. You also have a high block reward. Uh, right now, we're getting 150 Bitcoins or 150 Bitcoin vaults every 10 minutes. Miners that are participating in the early stages right now, like you guys are, you actually will get the highest returns, just like I did when I was mining Bitcoin in 2013. OK, the reduction of Bitcoin vault will catch Bitcoin somewhere around 2024. OK, when that happens, we'll actually be on the same schedule that Bitcoin is on from that point. 
And that's what's really unique. So you're you're here at the right time, guys. Look, if you haven't bought a package, I'm going to tell you this right now. When we get done, you want to buy a package because you want to be one of these early adopters that start mining this coin because that's when you're going to make the most money. OK, factual. Let's talk about the potential of Bitcoin Vault, because here's the other very unique side of it. And this comes into the mining itself. So Bitcoin, the network hash rate is 100 and 14 exahash. The market cap right now is $132 billion. The price obviously has went up and I think the market cap has too, but block reward used to be 12 and a half. It's now six and a quarter. In fact, these are all six and a quarter. I have to update this. But um, Bitcoin Vault is at five exahash. Now, you notice we're not actually reporting our market cap and there's a reason for it. You know, we don't want people to start trading this coin yet, shorting it and messing up the market. We want to give it time to grow, just like Bitcoin had a few years to grow. And then we'll release it where all this information will be reporting. People will start trading it. It will become an even bigger ecosystem. So uh, let's talk about right now when you look at this, the hash rate. So Bitcoin Cash has only got 1.65 exahash. Bitcoin SV has got 1.48 exahash. And we just passed five exahash of mining power. Now that's massive because it's not just mining city, mining the coin. That's what a lot of people don't realize. You, uh, We actually have a different standard. You guys can look it up. It's called, uh, the website's called digitalmining.org. And we use something called DDMS, which is Decentralized Digital Mining Standard. And here's what's unique about it. So Bitcoin, for instance, is being mined about 70 to 71, maybe even a little more in China, unfortunately. And that makes the mining itself not decentralized, even though the wallets and the network and everything else is decentralized. But let's say somebody uh, like in China got mad and they wanted to attack the network. That would create an issue. So Bitcoin Vault as a security feature decided to subscribe to the DDMS code where all of the mining is also decentralized, making this harder to crack, harder for a 51% attack, making it harder to attack the network itself and cause issues. And that's the beauty of what this is, okay? So um, let's talk about Mining City and MindBest. Now, I told you how MindBest got started. I told you how uh, Hanil Park basically approached I, Alan Greg, and said, hey, I, I want to bring my people to you and so on and so forth. He, and he basically wanted to come in and bring massive amounts of people to Mind Best. And in order to do that, because of their contracts with Kazakhstan, they had to do a basically what we call spinoff, which basically created Mining City. So Greg, VP of marketing for Mind Best, left and became the CEO of Mining City. And uh, Mining City basically is the marketing arm, so you guys understand, for Mine Best. Okay, this is actually some of the mining boxes. We call this the Mine Best boxes. Uh, I Al invented this because the way that it's structured, it's actually doesn't require cooling like a typical mine does, which cuts down on the cost of electricity and increases the profits. So, like, this is one of the things that I discovered is that I was doing some of my due diligence. Is you know, uh, I have my machines actually in. Uh, in Iceland before. But here's the crazy part. In Iceland, it got to a point when Bitcoin price was like right around $6,200 where I wasn't making any money off my machines. And most of the country or most of the world that was mining there said the same thing. They weren't making any money anymore. But because we're in a place called Kazakhstan where the electricity is half the price of Iceland, we were still profitable at mine best. That was one of the things that caught my attention about IO. He was super smart in how he did all of his calculations and how everything worked and how it all fit together. And um, Mining City, basically what they do is they sell hash power to mine cryptocurrencies. That's what they do. They're the marketing arm that sells the hash power for mine best. But what is that? What's that really look like? So when somebody buys hash power, IO basically goes out, he buys the machine that will provide the hash power. So they're guaranteed to get what they pay for because there's a machine there that's feeding that hash power, if that makes sense to you guys, okay? Where they take care of all the technology, the upgrades, the maintenance, uh, they take care of the electricity bill. It's all included in the package that you buy. They're very transparent. This is one thing too that I really like. This is actually a tour of some of the people in Mining City. I think uh, Hanil Park's probably down here somewhere. And I think uh, John is down here who actually flew in to see me. But uh, here's the cool part. The company is going to expedite the mining model in a B2, 
B situation where they do an income split accordingly. So uh, Mining City is going to pay out 35% commissions in total. They pay out 2% salaries. 6% of that money goes to Mine Best for mining farms. 24% goes to miners' purchases and maintenance. 3% to the shipping and taxes. 20% goes into pre mining and 10% goes to company profit. It's very transparent. It doesn't fluctuate. This is what it is. And they're constantly calculating and looking at all these things. So Mine Best itself, they have the mining expertise. Okay. We know they got the expertise because they have the awards. Okay. They have all of these things, you know, going on around the world. You saw IL speaking. Uh, I'll show you some awards when we're done so you guys can actually see some of the awards. But uh, they actually provide all the infrastructure and all the power and the computing activities. So Mining City could do what they do best and they can go out and market the product. OK, now, one thing you need to know is, you know, the stability of the mining farms themselves. Mine Best actually has multiple mining farms. Okay, And I'm going to talk about that a little bit because I think that's very important for people to understand. Uh, mine Best is focused on Kazakhstan, but they also have some facilities in China. They have uh, other facilities in a couple of other countries. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show you actually one of those facilities as it has grown, because I've actually been looking at the Google map. And I'm going to share that with you guys tonight so you guys can actually see that. I think it's just kind of cool to look at. But, uh, you know, they actually have now, I think it's over 240 megawatts or 260 megawatts of power out there right now. And there's more coming online as we speak. You know, we're growing. Uh, this is actually how it basically works. There's a cooperative agreement between Mining City and Mine Best. Mining City is actually owned by Prophetic, which is a Cypress-owned company, and miningcity.com is just a website. So you guys really know how that partnership works. Uh, we have a stable power supply. Our power supply is actually less than five, per, five cents per kilowatt in Kazakhstan, and it's cheaper in a couple of other places. We have the Mine Best box, which is the cooling system that's acted, uh, activated automatically. So we don't have separate air conditioning, which keeps the cost down. We have the transparency. So we, we show people how to rent out hash power with all the electricity, with everything included uh, for 1,100 days and get into profit as quick as possible. One of the things that I will tell you that I really love about IAL is this. Uh, when I first joined, we were all using the old Bitmain S9 amp miner. But here's the crazy part. When he was doing his calculations, he realized that he could cut costs on electricity while increasing the profits by just switching machines. So guess what happened? They upgraded all of the machines, didn't charge anybody anything. We just started making more money because of the machine, machine change. And you can kind of see a little bit of this in this slide, but this is the thing. We went from paying $7.98 uh, per day to paying $2.39 per day. That's profit in our pocket. And so uh, it became smart. You know. So this is the thing, guys. If you like what you've seen so far, I'm going to tell you up front. You always have to go back to sign up with the person who got you here. That's very important to me. Don't come to me. Don't go to Darren. Don't go to any of the other leaders. Go to the person who got you here. That's the way we work. We take care of our team. We work together as a unit. If you're coming on and you're brand new, we're here to help you. We're here to teach you. We're here to train you. We're here to do everything we possibly can to make you successful. But after you sign up, you got to purchase a plan. And I'm going to tell you up front, purchase a Bitcoin vault plan. And then you'll start mining. 10 days after purchase. The next day, you'll get your first payout. You can take that payout any day you want. That's your choice. It's up to you. Okay, so let's talk about the marketing plan. Let's talk about how you get paid. Okay, because this is one of the most important parts of it is because there's five very unique ways to get paid here. You got a binary tree bonus, you got a binary matching bonus, and then you have a plan bonus, then you have the repurchase bonus, and you have a residual bonus. Now, the plan uh, well, actually, we'll just get into that as we go through it. So here's the thing. You have to purchase a plan. So we got a package that's 300 uh, right now. This is a, just a promotional deal. We don't know if it's going to last forever, but it's allowing people to get in and basically buy and test drive it. That's really what that's for. It's a test drive. 300 bucks. You get three terahash for 1,100 days. Now, you'll notice three terahash, $300. That's $100 a terahash. As you go through this, you're going to notice the next one. $600, six terahash, still same $100. At 1,200, you get 12 terahash. 2,400, you're going to get 24 terahash. At 4,200, you get 42 terahash. But at 12,600, 
you actually get a 12 terahash bonus. So instead of getting 126 terahash, you get 138. And this applies to Bitcoin and to Bitcoin Vault. Okay, so let's talk about whoops. Okay, so let's talk about your rank system because this is kind of a unique deal. I had to get my head around this a little bit. But every time somebody joins, whether you place them left or right, doesn't really matter. What you're going to notice is you have this little thing called binary points. So take a look at this part right here where I'm at. Okay, see the zero five, the one, the city builder, so on and so forth. So when somebody comes in and they buy points or buy a plan, they get points. When you have five points on your left, five points on your right, that's going to allow you a chance to actually cycle, and make $200. We're going to come down to that in a second in a slide. But here's the cool part. When you actually jump ranks because your team is growing, okay, then you can cycle more times per day. We're going to talk about that. So I just became a developer. I'm headed to city manager pretty quick. Where every time you actually uh, join uh, or get a rank, you actually have to have a specific plan. So as a developer, you only have to have $600 in mining plan. As a city manager, you got $2,400. As a city chief, you got to have $4,200. As a city mayor, you got to have 12, six. And as a governor, you got at least $13,800 in mining. But guys, I'm going to tell you, I started out with $35, you know, $100 package because uh, that was back then before we did some changes to our packages. They used to be a uh, 500, a thousand, 2000, or you buy one of each for 3,500. That's what I did. Now I have a 12,600 package in my name. I have a 12,600 package in my wife's name. Plus I have the 3,500 and I'm buying more. I mean, why? Because I can see it making money. It made sense. So here's how this works. As you're basically jumping ranks, you have to basically, uh, a city builder and above, you got to sponsor five citizens, which is $600 and above package. Five citizens at $600 and above, and you have to have $12,000 in your total team volume, which means anybody on your team could help bring in that volume, not just you. And then you got to become, to become a city developer, you got to have three city builders under your team and at least one have to happen in your team A. And I'm going to talk about that in a second so you understand the difference between your team A and team B. And then you got to have $60,000 in team volume. When you actually hit $300,000 in volume and you have at least one city developer in your team A, you actually become a city manager. Your city chief, when you have $2.4 million in your team, and again, that's not all coming from you. It's just as deep as it goes. You'll actually have uh, one from your team, one city manager from team A, the other two could be anywhere in your downline, and then you'll actually become a city chief manager. City chief or city mayor is when you guys actually have 12 million in volume. You got total total of three city managers, with one from team A, you become a city mayor. When you become a governor, now this is where the money gets crazy, and we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, you got to have three city mayors with at least one from team A and $100 million in volume. This is the biggest rank that they've ever had, but we already have our first governor, or maybe even two by now, actually. So team tree. So this is the thing. Whenever you guys place your people, you're going to have uh, your team tree. I'm just going to tell you up front, is basically like a unilevel to help you guys understand what that looks like. So you're actually going to have, let's just go to the next slide so I can explain it. So the first five people that you register, that you personally sponsor, uh, are going to be your first five, your team A. Your next five, next people from six all the way to infinity will actually become your team B. But here's the cool part. Every single person that goes frontline to you, six all the way to infinity, their first five also become your level two. And that's where you actually can make some additional income. And we'll talk about that as we go through this binary tree. But this, again, is what I was talking about with your binary points. Once you place people in the binary, they're officially placed and you submitted it. Their points will lock in on the left and lock in on the right. When you have uh, five left, five right, you're actually going to go ahead and make the $200 cycle. So you can actually see how that works. When uh, this is you right here at your top, you have 14 points, 12 po or 11 points. And here's how it worked. You have seven points in big Bitcoin. You have seven points in Bitcoin vault. Okay. $4,200 plan, $4,200 plan. You have four points here. You have seven points here, 2,400, 2,400. Now, you need five Bitcoin, five points Bitcoin, five points for Bitcoin Vault to cycle on both of those. That would have gave you two cycles, not just one. So let's talk about your, uh, actually, I just went over this. So that's your bonus. So let's talk about uh, your bonuses. Let's go to this. So your 
resident. So let's say somebody's a resident. They can only cycle one time per day, which means they can only make two hundred dollars. When they actually become a citizen, they can now cycle up to four times per day and make up to eight hundred dollars per day. As a city builder, you can cycle five times per day up to a thousand dollars. As a city developer, six times per day for up to twelve hundred. As a city manager, eight times per day for sixteen hundred. As a city chief manager, ten times per day for two thousand dollars. And as a city mayor, 12 times per day for up to $2,400. And up, as a governor, you can cycle 14 times up to $2,800 a day. Now, that's off just the cycles. Now, you also have this thing that are called your matching bonus. Okay, Your matching bonus basically is limited based on the rank you are. So like as a resident, you only get your first level. When you're a citizen, you get two levels. When you're a city builder, you get four levels. When you're a city developer, you go down six levels. When you're a city manager, you get eight levels. City chief manager, nine levels. City mayor, 10 levels. Governor, 11 levels. And here's what this looks like. Every time somebody on your team down there cycles, you get a $10 check match. Now, I got news for you. That little $10 check match has made Hanil Park crazy, crazy rich. Because $10 every time somebody cycles in his entire tree, 11 levels deep is massive amounts of money. Because you got to keep in mind, if you sign up 50 people on your front line, that 50 people might end up being 2,000 people on your second line. It might end up being 10,000 people on your third line. So it gets to be very massive as this grows. And your binary bonuses just keep paying like clockwork. Okay? It's massive. Uh Let's talk about your, actually, let's skip this one for a second. So your potential as a governor. So this is what I want you to see, like uh, here. So here's what happened. They had, uh, as a governor, they were able to go all the way down. They get uh, $10 for every person that actually cycles. So it'll show you. So let's take a look here. You got 12 cycles, $10 bonus, 30 days, 12, eight bonus. Okay. And, uh, you obviously then you have your next level down. They had 10 on your city chiefs, $10, 27. Okay. Then you have your managers, eight levels or eight cycles, $10, 30 days, $64,800 in matches. Your developer, six cycles, $10, 30 days, 145,000. Your builders, five, five cycles, $10, 30 days, $364,500. So as a governor, this was his monthly bonus or potential for the monthly bonus. Guys, pay attention to this. $612,900 in bonus money. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I never seen a comp plan that quite paid like that. That, to me, is real money. That, to me, is retirement money. When you can make more in one month than most people pay in, you know, get paid in two or three years in just $10 check matches, it's a crazy amount of money, Okay. Then you have your plan bonus, okay? So your plan bonus is based on your team A, team B, or your team B, A structure, okay? So let's talk about what that looks like so you guys understand. So again, you sign up your first five, you're going to make 5% off those people off everything that they buy up front. And then in your team B, from six to infinity, you're going to make 10% on those people, Okay. And here's the cool part. Every time somebody on your team B goes out and signs up somebody, you're going to make a 5% bonus on their first five people all the way down. Uh, so resident, it doesn't apply to citizen that goes 10 levels deep. City builder, it goes 15 levels deep. City developer goes 20 levels deep. City manager goes 30 levels deep. And with the city chief manager, mayor and governor, there are no level limits. So again, your bonus money can be massive amounts of money. Okay. Your repurchase bonus from your team A and team B also doubles. So here's what's really cool. When somebody makes a purchase, you make 5%. But if they make a repurchase in the back office, I'm actually going to show you this. You can actually earn 10% on the repurchase. On the B, B side, you're going to make 20%. And then anybody in the B team, their first five people, well, if they're repurchases, you're going to make 10%. And again, your citizen goes 10 levels. Builder goes 15 Developer goes 20, city ma manager goes 30, and there's no limits for the city chief manager, city mayor, and the governor. This comp plan, bar none, is one of the biggest money makers I have ever seen. And then as you start to climb and you start to uh, achieve a little more rank, you get this residual bonus. And this is kind of a nice little way to make some extra cash, guys. So as you become 
a city chief, a city builder, you can actually on your first generation get 1% bonus off of everything they do. Second generation off 1% off everything they do. And third generation, you can make a half a percent off everything they do. Okay. And city developer, same thing. One, one and half. City manager and above, it's just on your first and second generations. It's now 1%. But by this time you hit these kind of ranks, guys, I can't even get into how much money it could be. But uh, but let me just close this out and then I'm going to come back. First off, I want to say thank you for coming to this webinar. And again, I want to encourage you to get back with the person who got you here to get started. But before you guys leave, I want to actually just show you something because I think it's really to be transparent and show you guys something. I'm just going to log into my wife's account. I removed the uh, two factor authentication off of it for now so I can actually log in really quick. I want you to see this so you can actually see the income potential um, for somebody who isn't working the business at all. OK, true story. My wife's not doing anything. We just bought the, ma the mining. OK, so um, I've actually signed up a few people under her position and I will keep doing so because that's just how I work. But uh, in your Bitcoin vault plan, I want you to see actually, uh, Darren, you got your calculator handy. Let me stop sharing for a second. I'm going to bring you back here, Darren, so I can actually come over here. Darren, you still there? Unmute yourself. Oh, there you go. OK, so I want you to do me a favor. I want you, I want you to do some calculations for me real quick so people can actually see it. And uh, you can tell us that number. I know we might get a little feedback because we're on together. But I want to share my screen and I want you to do some math for us and you can tell people what this number is. I think it's really important that they can see it. So let's take a look at the overview. OK, so here's what happened. My wife has now made from mining alone. And, and keep in mind, guys, let me just show you, actually, because I literally just bought this plan. OK, so she's got a Bitcoin vault plan that started mining on the first. OK, so she's only been mining now for basically less than a week. OK. So in that little plan, when I go back to her wallet, you actually see right here the actual income. So this is like, you know, obviously with one day, she's got three packages inside the 12 six. So it's not just one. You got a fifty five dollars. You got thirty seven, thirteen, then the four forty five. And then you turn around, and do it all over again. OK, where you got the uh, oh, actually, that's for the rank investment. Uh, this is the PMP. So this is, and you know, you can see we've actually paid for other people's packages because they didn't have Bitcoin vault. But here again, you'll see fifty six dollars and thirty seven cents, thirty seven fifty eight, fourteen oh nine. And then guess what? Four fifty. And then all of a sudden the mining payouts, if you look again, we're still on this. Uh, that's actually the first day before. So let's go back and look at these. So look at this. 55, 36, 1382, 490, 442, 53, 93. I mean, guys, it's $140 a day off this package right now. That's what the price has been. These are actualities. Now, let me say this to you. I can't tell you that you're going to make exactly what my wife is making in her package. I can't tell you that because it may not be true. Bitcoin is our um, Bitcoin vault, just like Bitcoin fluctuates in price. The mining difficulty changes there's a lot of things that change and go into the factor and what you could earn more people could join the pool which could reduce what your payouts are but here's the thing you will never be able to lose money in this situation you have 1100 days to make your money back you know without you doing anything because the machine is doing the work for you okay this is one of the cleanest and easiest opportunities ever if i could have convinced all my friends to start mining bitcoin in 2013 they would all be rich this is your opportunity to do the same thing. OK, so Darren, calculate this for me real quick. We have six point three six six, six point three six six plus five point three six seven plus five point one oh eight. Now, I realize I didn't get all the numbers on each one. of them, But what's that total, Darren? Sixteen point eight four one. OK, take that times two hundred dollars. Thirty three hundred and sixty eight twenty. So here's the deal. My wife, who hasn't really done anything and to be brutal, brutally honest with you, I haven't done a lot either for her because these are everybody in her tree. That's everybody. OK, but I'm starting to build here right now. So it's just six people. OK, just six people in her tree. And let's face it, she's got uh, a resident in here and the other ones are all citizens, meaning they're all six hundred dollar packages, no big packages here. But with just that little bit of money, little bit. In the mining, my wife was able to make, what is it, 30, what would you say, how much in dollar amount? 33 
So guys, like this has to be one of the easiest opportunities that you could ever do to make income. I mean, it's literally got to be one of the easiest things to do. Okay. If somebody invited you here, take time out to have a conversation with them. If you want to have a chat with me, tell them to connect you with Ari. Let's have a chat because I'm here to help you get involved the right way. I won't ever lie to you. I won't deceive you. I will share every bit of facts that I know 100% across the board. If you want to learn, guess what? We have a complete crypto academy we're about to launch. We're going to start teaching cryptocurrency entirely for free. Okay. Now, I'll tell you also on our team, my upline, my direct sponsor, sponsor is Hannah Pinza. Her hus husband is a professor who teaches cryptocurrency. So maybe we could actually get all of our teams together and do something to help our teams grow massively. We also have access to Greg Rogowski, who's the CEO of Mining City. We have access to Ayal Abramovich, who is the CEO of MindBest. And I guarantee you, he is without a doubt probably one of the smartest people I have met in the industry this far. Okay. So, guys, please do yourself a favor. Take the step. Get involved. Change your financial future. Okay. I want to welcome you tonight to the Crypto Wealth Club, Mighty City team, and I want to help you guys change your financial future. But we can't do it until you take the first step, and that's getting started. So, get signed up, get a package, and let's go. You guys have a great night on behalf of myself and my business partner. Darren Little. Guys, I really enjoyed being here and, uh, you know, I'm excited. I hope you guys could feel some of that, but I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen something this real with so much proof and so many things behind it that just tells me, Ari, plant your flag. So, you know, like this is the thing for me. Everybody who knows me will tell you in the past, I've done five, six things at one time all the time. I told Darren, I found something. He goes, Really? Tell me about it. I said, bro, I'm planting my flag here. This is all I'm going to do. And keep in mind, Darren was kind of scared because Darren and I, we, as I said, we own Black Ops Live Underground Marketing. You can see it on my shirt. You can see it on his hat. And we teach marketing. And we've been building a whole system to actually help teach and instruct. He was nervous that I was going to keep going because I fell in love with this so hard. But obviously, our business is our business, and I'm going to keep that going. But this is where, our, I mean, all my passion is. Everything that I believe in is right here because crypto changed my life. And I know if you trust it, it can change yours too. So I want you guys to have a good night and I want you to enjoy life. And we'll see you on the next webinar next Sunday. And if you guys are on our team, I want you to keep in mind that if you get into the group every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, we also do training where we teach you guys not only about Mining City, but we teach you how to promote it. We teach you how to build the team. We teach you everything that you need to know to be successful and get yourself to a high six-figure income. Have a great night. On behalf of myself and my business partner, Darren, you got anything you want to add? Take action and win, guys. We're on a major runaway freight train right now. So pull the trigger and let's do this. Let's go, guys. Have a good night.